Welcome. Today we're going to be discussing the technique broken rod, its execution, some things you should know about its execution, and some just some interesting things about its execution and how to compensate for any problems that arise. So let's talk about the ideal phase. Up to now, um, or with other parts of American Kempo, weapon techniques such as guns, we've been dealing with stuff from the front. Okay? We have a bunch of different ideas about how far away they can be, and up and down, back to back, side to side, that sort of stuff. So now we're going to do that same thing, but now we're going to have our back to the opponent. So there's a little bit more restrictions that we would have. So in this case, if my back is towards the opponent and he's not touching me, I really don't know whether this person has a gun or not. They just say, I have a gun, hands up. You do it regardless, give them that. But in this case, they've decided to intimidate you, so they basically just jam you in the back with the gun. And they say, hands up. Okay? So up and down, it generally works from chest to lower abdomen. It would not work from high. We have different techniques for that. Um, so this one generally works at a lower position, and they say hands up. So you get your hands up, and you're ready to go. The idea, in general, of this technique is to establish your base, face the opponent, and then work the opponent. So one of the problems that may arise here is where I actually step and how I'm moving this uh, gun away from me. So if I step this way, if you notice I really haven't done anything to get out of the way of that gun. If, even if I step this way, I really haven't done anything to get out of the way of the gun other than move to the slightly to the side. But if I add rotation when I do this, I've now gotten out of that way. Now there's three things we can do. We can either move us, move them, or move both. In this case, what I was showing you the move me piece, but this is a move both. So as I do that step, what I want to also do is drop this arm down to get that gun out of the way so it's pointing away from me. So if we do this with me facing you, what you're going to see is this. Okay? The problem that may arise here is I'm spinning in the air. I'm trying to do this as I'm stepping away from them. What you want to do is, is have rule number one, establish the base. So it's a one-two technique, not a one technique. The reason why is because what I'm doing with this hand, and we'll get into that just now. What I want to do is I want to hit the gun out of the way and then slide down and grab. So I don't want to come across on a horizontal like this because then I have margin for error. What I want to do is increase that margin for error by coming down and grabbing. Something very similar to what we do in attacking mace, but now on a diagonal rather than a, a direct contour. Okay, so let's go back to this slide again. So what's going to happen here is I'm actually going to try and do this elbow as I settle in. And there's one or two things that could happen. Either I get to this grab and he's holding the gun, or he's not holding the gun very well and I slam it to the floor. Just as we say in a lot of instances, we have a long version of this technique and a short version of this technique. This would be a perfect opportunity to take the short version of this technique. In this case, what I would do is just go right through the arm and go for the gun. The reason being is I want to take out his major so that even if we're struggling for the gun, at least I've broken the arm. And now I have more advantage of getting that gun over them. So keep in mind, we have long versions and short versions. What we're going to do is stick to the long version of this technique. So I get to this piece and I do this grab. As we worry about with the front ones, I need to worry about where I'm controlling this gun. If I try and control the gun here and push it that way, he has a potential of coming back to me. Same thing on this side. If I do this and he begins to push it that way, he always come back to me. So what I want to do is make sure I'm going to control the gun by controlling the wrist. We're doing it this way from the front, and now we're doing it this way one-handed from the rear of their arm, okay? Or outside of their arm, okay? So just keep that in mind. And if we need to, we can always use our forearm to get a little bit more of a grip. But remember, anchored elbows are our friends, so chances are we're gonna keep that elbow down so that we're in a more fight position. Now, notice we haven't controlled anything else on his arm, which we tend to do with all the rest of those techniques. That's on purpose because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attack what's going on. So we've turned to face them, and now what we're gonna do is come in to do this break. Now, if you notice what I just did with my hand, I left that hand up, we're not going to be doing that. What we're going to do is drop it down just slightly as we do this break to get them hyperextended. And notice where that gun stays. 
pointing down at all times. Now, once I've diverted that gun, I want to make sure it never points towards me. Okay? So as we keep going forward, you're going to see that happen. So let's start one more time in the air, review this part. Make sure you step and then rotate down into 45. Grab, control that weapon. Break, step through, hyperextend that arm, come through and hit. That's going to push their butt back, but it may or may not bend them. And that's where a different variation may occur here. So as we always do with things that are fairly close to us, we don't want to gap because he can start taking advantage by elbowing us. So what we want to do is third hand. So if we get to this hit and we've got that third hand in place, but we're not secure with it, we may want to reverse that circle and get right to that arm so that we have that control of that weapon. Because remember, we're talking about controlling a weapon here. So if we are secure with that and we know that we've got this under control, we can take the uh, top route and get to the head. So now if he didn't bend over, this would help with that bend to get this crossing talent position. Or if he's already bent over, we can use it as a hit and then get to that controlling position. But now once we've got this controlling position, what we're going to do is get rid of that gun. So what we're going to do is step forward, slide our hand down, and pull out. Okay, so let's do that one more time. So I've gotten to here, got the hit. In this case, I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to push pull and grab that gun. Then I'm going to shoot this gun straight up under, and then turn back in, hit him in the hit, in the, directly in the chest. And as I do that, I'm going to settle into this neutral bow. Then from there, I can readjust, set, cross out, cover, and get ready in my situation. Talk and shoot if I need to. Okay. All, all this time, you'll keep in mind that the fact that I'm trying to keep that gun pointing away from me and in safe directions at all times. So, one more quick review. Touching you, hands up. Do not rotate in air. Establish your base, turn and rotate. Move both you and them, slide down at a diagonal. Get control of that wrist right away, their wrist. Step through, break, get them on their tippy toes hit to get them to bend. Either reverse if you've got a gap here, but if you've got a good third hand, come over the top, control that, push pull by resetting and grabbing that gun and stripping, come straight up underneath, set and drive that directly into their chest, cross out and cover and reset. Okay, one more time. We'll go from this angle here, just a little bit faster that you can see it. Hope this video helps you. Thank you very much.